Thank you so much indeed for your time, Halima. What are the implications of this decision? So this decision is um, is a continuation of what we've been seeing for the last 20 months, and especially in December, on December 24th, uh, the Taliban announced that women could not um, work for international um, non-governmental organizations, humanitarian organizations, um, and they couldn't attend uh, universities anymore. And so now we are a few months after that, and the restrictions and the bans continue. Today, we found out that the uh, it was not an official decree. It has not. We have not seen an official decree yet. It was announced um, to the UN that their female staff could not come back to work. And so it's a continuation. It is a continuation of tightening and restrictions and, and removing women from public and public life. Yeah, I mean, you spoke about some of the restrictions imposed by the Taliban. You forgot to mention they're required to be dressed in a way that only reveals their eyes, that if they're traveling more than 72 kilometers away from home, they need a male chaperone. They can't go to parks, gyms, and swimming pools. As you say, it seems as if they're being erased from public life. But in a country like Afghanistan, which is hugely rural and in many areas is extremely traditional, how are women going to be able to access humanitarian assistance for themselves and their families? So that has that was an issue of December. So when I listed to you, that was just the last four months. If we move back 14 months, all those other restrictions. Yeah, are okay, excuse me, absolutely, okay. carry on, yeah. Maram, Maram and the restrictions on dress and just the, the general restrictions were imposed at various stages. We have a list of over 40 decrees that were passed that affect women. Um, in the last couple of months, it seems like the Taliban have stepped up even more in banning women accessing public spaces and, and also accessing jobs. Um, and so there are a lot of concerns about women who need, who um, who are in dire situations. I'm in touch with aid workers in Ghazni province and other provinces who used to work for Care International and other distribution organizations um, that distributed food aid, medical aid. And they tell me that women who were beneficiaries of their services in villages, in rural areas, call them every day saying, what happened? Why did you stop coming? Why did you stop bringing us aid? We relied on your services. And the aid workers tell me they're heartbroken because these women they've known for years, many of them have worked for you know more than a decade for some of these humanitarian services. And for women who are heads of families and households, women who are um, widows, um, and just in general, families relied on this kind of aid. Total life expectancy in Afghanistan, for a man, 44.8 years, for a woman, 45.3 years. And the country has a crisis just in terms of families being able to get enough food apart from everything else. When you look at a situation like this, Halima, quite often societies will say, while we suffer now, we have hope that the younger people in our country will enforce the change that our nation needs. And then when you look at Afghanistan's population, 42% is under the age of 15. But the problem is, with a leadership like the Taliban, people can't request change. They can't go out and protest for change. They'll get punished. So what future does the nation have? So on one end, we have this situation where almost 9 million people are at risk of starving in Afghanistan. And that gets, uh, that do doesn't get as much attention. Um, and that is, th those are men, women, and children. On the other side, the other part of your question, when boys are being socialized right now in this, uh, again, in this Taliban ideology that women don't need to be part of public life of economic life outside the home. That socialization is concerning because it can happen very quickly and kids are being indoctrinated at a very young age and in the schools. Um, the boys are only allowed to go to school for the most part after after sixth grade. So that socialization is, co is concerning and that the ideology of the Taliban is quickly and, and being ingrained and indoctrinated um, into these young boys who will grow up to be 
if the, the, the de facto authorities continue, will be the future uh, soldiers, foot soldiers, and will enforce some of these decrees that the Taliban are are passing. So that's, that's very concerning. Now, the resistance, so you mentioned resistance. There is still a great population inside Afghanistan who have benefited from education and seeing um, the society open up to women and minorities over the last 20 years. The hope is that they will come to the front lines, obviously with fear. And I talk to a lot of Afghans every day, every night, um, on the phone and on, on social media messaging. And they're looking for one, ways out, and two, ways to resist um, with, with the least amount of harm. And so the resistance is in their hands. The women are on the front lines. They are out there almost every couple of days protesting, putting their lives at risk. They know what's at stake. Halima, super interesting analysis. Thank you so much indeed for talking to us on TRT World. Really, really appreciate it.